In the eastern space, the columns have a more slender proportion, 1 to 10, as opposed to 1 to 7 in the west. They also stand closer. Thus the load-bearing activity becomes quieter, and instead of striding, the twelve columns stand in a circle. Therefore, they can be considered in either direction. Rudolf Steiner, the creator of the Goetheanum, sometimes showed the stage capitals from west to east. On the other hand, he also said they come toward the auditorium, not evolving like the auditorium capitals, but opening toward us as members of a single being. The being thus alluded to must be the same who is shown in the sculpture, whose place is under the baldachin at the source of the Ark of Columns. It therefore seems possible to begin here. In the first capital, counting from the east, the force from below points upward, light-filled, to a like force from above. Into the middle, a flow bestows the foundation of substance. The upper is connected, the lower disconnected. In the second, the upper gives, the lower receives. The lower is still disconnected. In the third, the motif has shifted to the face of the prism. The lower rises. It still opens receptively to the upper. But it can now carry itself, becoming a being in its own right, in the middle. It has taken on the movement impulse from the curving upper flow. The upper has again become a quiet light, but tending with a slight curve toward the lower. Suddenly the motif reverses. The upper detaches. The lower connects. The upper has entered the receptive center formed by the lower in the previous capital. The lower has remained on the face of the prism and become so broad that it merges with its neighbors. Face and edge are exchanged between the fourth and fifth capitals, as between the second and third. The lower develops a strong individual vertical connection to the earth while remaining joined to its neighbors. The upper hovers in their midst. The last capital is connected both above and below. Like the last auditorium capital, visible here in the background, it reaches a balanced rhythm, but with its straight lines appears more absolute. Its exceptional form 
stands at the boundary. The capitals loosely approximate negatives of one another, the first and last only slightly, the second and fifth, the third and fourth. The architrave, always ascending from east to west, breaks through the upper edge between the third and fourth columns. Similarly, in the auditorium, above the middle column, where it ascends from west to east. A painting by Hermann Linde associates the twelve columns with the zodiac. This picture is part of a series Rudolf Steiner asked Linde to exhibit during Rudolf Steiner's lectures. Rudolf Steiner also confirmed, with regard to these columns, that there is symmetry in the zodiac. To judge by the painting, the solstices lie in the axis of symmetry. The same forces at work in the planetary realm underlie the evolution of the auditorium columns. The forces of the realm of the fixed stars appear in the stage columns. The seven show an affinity with the stages of plant metamorphosis, the twelve with the crystal heaven. Now, of course, they are going to be made of different kinds of wood, as we learned the time before last. The first, counting from the east, is of ash wood, with a core of hornbeam, the second of cherry, with a core of ash, the third of oak, with a core of cherry, the fourth of elm, with a core of oak, the fifth of maple, with a core of elm, and the sixth of birch, with a core of maple. The shaft is composed of eleven pieces, forming a pentagram in cross-section. The columns in the auditorium likewise have an internal pentagram, but there it is always of the same wood as the exterior. If you turn the circle inside out, moving the twelve columns through the speaker's desk, as shown by these lines, they stand between the twice seven, in keeping with the wood they are made of. And do the forces shown in the twelve capitals play a hidden role in the transformation of the seven? In the auditorium, the carved motifs in the bases circle in sevenfold rhythm. On the stage, they rest, facing the center. This is artistically possible because the rake of the stage is gentler than the tilt of the auditorium. They have become thrones, approaching more explicitly the presence of individual beings. In the first three, the seat 
is attached at the back to the column. These first three seats are majestically oversized. In the last three, a chair stands, similar in form to the chairs for the mystery dramas, the same each time, emancipated from its surrounding and from the column behind it. Next to the first three thrones stand little columns upon the floor. Next to the last three, they stand on the sides of the throne. They therefore begin at a height of about two feet and a half, even with the upper ends of those of the first three thrones. The canopies above the first and last thrones show a triangular tendency. Those above the second and fifth, rectangular. Above the third and fourth, the back opens upright to suggest a hexagram and a pentagon. In height, the series rises and then descends. The first and last thrones have triangular side columns, with the flat side forward by the first throne and the edge forward by the last. The second and fifth thrones have square side columns. The little pentagonal columns stand edge forward next to the third throne and may be flat side forward next to the fourth, even though this is not the case in the model as it stands restored today. The first is surrounded in unity. The second stands within a duality. You are protected by a strong shelter above. The third arises out of two interpenetrating triangles. The fourth is especially open with radiant harmony. The fifth opens the rectangle. The sixth opens the triangular, especially upward. In the West, dynamic architecture outside and metamorphosis inside surround the quiet of the audience. In the East, closed architecture outside and repose inside surround the movement on the stage. The stage is the smaller of the two spaces Closed off from the windows with their external light, it opens the source of spiritual light. Before it, the curtain veils the threshold. Three situations are possible. Either the curtain between the two spaces is closed for a lecture in the great hall, or it is open for an artistic event, or it is closed for a gathering in the smaller space. 
In other words, this is a building for science, art, and religion. As Rudolf Steiner puts it, nothing church-like. But those thrones, like everything else in the Goetheanum, are no mere decoration. They are of human size and meant for use. When supported by any foundation, we connect with a deep level of beings known as thrones who at the beginning of planetary evolution gave of their own warmth substance to lay the foundation for existence. Here the Goetheanum offers a gathering for twelve participants or to bring the work into contemporary civilization four times twelve. In the midst of the gathering stands a statue of another participant, invisibly present, Christ as the representative of humanity, along with the opposing powers,